All right, guys, so we are back with our um, American series. So what we were doing previously was our ITB friction syndrome um, condition. So we've obviously ran through how to release all the muscles involved with that, how to stretch them all out. And what we're gonna run through today is actually how to strengthen some of the key muscles that help to prevent that. Now, the strengthening is gonna focus on glute strengthening. So this isn't gonna be good just for the ITB friction syndrome injuries. It's also gonna be really beneficial for any knee problems, um, any hip pelvis problems and sometimes even any ankle or foot injuries as well. So this is a generally good exercise to do if you're a runner. So our glute muscles always tend to become quite weak or inhibited, especially if we're desk sitters. So when we tend to sit, compress the glute muscles all day, then what tends to happen is we're reducing all the neural nerve input into them and we just tend to disuse them a lot during the day. So they do tend to get quite weak. So what I'm gonna show you today is just a couple of glute strengthening exercises, which are so key for our runners. But I'm sure you've seen all the physio sort of prescribed glute exercises like your clams and your bridging and hip abduction quite a lot. So I'm just gonna show you how to do some advanced versions of that. So um, what we're gonna do is come down to the floor. So we are gonna be doing clams and hip abduction, but this is just how I like to progress that on and just take it to the next level, especially for people that have been doing these for a while. You're kind of mid-marathon training anyway, so you really wanna sort of up your strengthening too, um, so that it sort of links in with your longer distances. So these are some of my favorite exercises at the moment to give a lot of my marathon clients. So what we're gonna be doing for the clam, we're gonna be still doing the clam motion, but we're gonna be doing it in a side plank position. So what we're doing is, knees are bent as if we're about to do a clam. However, we're coming all the way up into a side plank position. So when you're in this position, make sure your elbow is underneath your shoulder and that your hips are stacked nicely over the top of each other. So what I don't need to do, be doing is twisting your hips one way or the other. So try and get hips level and then also make sure that we're not sagging our spine down at all. We want to try and get our um, spine as straight as possible. So from this position, what we're going to be doing is so making sure we're getting a little bit of um, core engagement here. So just drawing belly button into spine, drawing pelvic floor up, hand on hip so that you can monitor any sway of the hips at all. Personally, I prefer to do in front of a mirror so you can actually get some visual feedback as well. And then what we're doing with our feet together, we're doing our clam exercise. So take the knee as high as it will go without any moving or shifting of the pelvis. Okay, and then when we lower it back down again, lower it down to horizontal, don't let the knees touch, and then we're coming back up again. So when we're doing these, we're going for high reps, okay? We want endurance of the muscle, that's what you need when you're running. So if you find once you do 30 of these, you're like, that's actually quite easy, then do it with a band around the knees. So place the band around the knee area, and you're doing the same thing, but just against the resistance of the band. So that's the first one I want you doing. Okay, give that one a go. The second one is our hip abduction, again, in the similar position. So there's two variations of this one. So instead of our usual hip abduction, we are, again, coming up into that same side plank position. Everything's stacked nicely. We're engaging everything around the core. And then what we're doing from here is we're doing our hip abduction. Now, when we're taking the leg up, I want you to go up, not just up in a straight line, but in a slight sort of posterior backward angle too. What a lot of people tend to do is cheat with this one. They really try and use their TFL, because they've become very dominant in that, hence we start getting ITB issues. So we tend to start doing this. Our hip rolls backwards, our leg comes forwards. We really start using our hip flexors and our TFL too much. So make sure with this one, we've got that hip, top hip stacked nicely on the bottom one, and we're taking our leg in that up and posterior um, movement. Um, again, when we're lowering down, let's lower down to horizontal, and then we're straight back up again. Now, if you find, again, 30 of these is quite easy, you can do exactly the same thing, but in a full plank. So again, we're coming up into our full plank position, exactly the same movement, hips stacked nicely, we're lifting the leg up and taking it back in a posterior direction, okay? So that's just how you can really upgrade your clams and your hip abduction, because you're taking the exercise to the next level by working the core at the same time, but also putting a lot of load through the hip abduction muscles. So, next one. Last one we're gonna do is working more of our glute max. So the previous ones were working more of your hip stabilizers, so all your side muscles through here, like your glute medius, glute min. This one's gonna be working more of the glute max. It involves a lot more core work, so you need a lot more stability as well. So we're gonna be resting our back on the ball. So with this one, we're gonna be doing basically a variation of a single leg bridge, okay? So what we want to do, so we're advancing this one by basically taking the stability of the floor away. 
So what I want you doing is resting your back, trying to keep it as straight as you can on a ball behind you. First thing you need to do is get your balance. So we're gonna be doing single leg bridging. Now you can obviously do this one just on double legs, but that's obviously quite easy. So first thing you're gonna do is lift one leg up, get your balance, okay? From here, we're gonna be doing our hip thrust. So really drive through your heel, clench your buttock muscles, engage core, so we're drawing the belly down towards the spine, putting a pelvic floor up, and then we are driving through the heel and pushing yourself up, and then we're lowering back down again, okay? So pushing up and then driving back down again. All right, obviously you're making sure you're, making sure you're trying to get, again, high reps of this one. Try and aim for a good 30 reps doing that on both sides. You can obviously split that up into sets of 10 or 15 though, if you're finding that you're a bit unbalanced or if you're finding it's quite fatiguing, all right? 